let's do another example. This time we're going to have to do all of the work ourselves. We're not going to have the state variables given to us. So here we've got this system shown. This is just the basic spring mass damper system. And we want to represent this system using state space. And we're told that the output needs to be the displacement of the mass. All right, so first thing we need to do is figure out our equation of motion. So if you go through here, I'm just going to do a quick free body diagram because there's not much going on on this problem. You'll have your mass, you've got your spring, so you have k times y, and then you've got your damper, which will be c times y dot, and then you have that applied force f. Okay, so go ahead and get your equation of motion here. If you do that, you're going to have m y double dot equals f minus k times y minus b times y dot. And in the state space section, it's going to be better for you to leave this equation in this form because you're going to want y double dot by itself. So you don't need to move every y term over and then flip the signs around and all that like we were doing. It's going to be less work for you to leave it in that form. Okay, so now we have this. Now I need to figure out my variables I want to use. Okay, so this was step one. So step two, let's pick the variables. Now remember, we need a position and velocity for each mass. All right, we only have one mass, fortunately, here. So that means we're going to have x1. That's the variable I used. You can call it whatever you want. You could call it S1, you could call it Z1, doesn't matter. Now X1 is going to equal Y. So this represents my position or displacement of mass M. Now X2 is going to be equal to Y dot. That means X2 represents the velocity of this mass. Okay, so now we've got that. Now what we want to do is take the derivative. So I always just draw this little arrow to indicate I'm going to take the derivative. Now if I take the derivative, I'm going to have x1 dot equals y dot. And remember, we want to write everything in terms of these two variables here. So y dot is what? Hopefully you said x2, so that's equal to x2. And then when we do this equation, take the derivative, we're going to get x2 dot equals y double dot. Well, okay, y double dot isn't here, so that's when we go back up to this equation. Notice how we now get back to our equation of motion. That's why we have to have position and velocity for each mass, because that's the only way to get to this equation of motion. Now you're going to solve this for y double dot. So that's going to give you 1 over m times f minus k over m times y. Now I don't want to put y in here. Okay. We want to replace that with the variable. So we want x1. And then we're going to have minus b over m. We have y dot here. I don't want to use y dot down here, I want to replace it with the very, so x2. So now you got that. Now that we're done with this, that was the hard part. Now we're ready to go ahead and put it in matrix form. And remember, it's x dot equals ax plus bu. So this left-hand side is going to be right here. So x1 dot, x2 dot, that's going to equal our matrix A times x, where that's the state vector. The state vector is right here. So x1 and x2 plus a matrix B times the input. Our input here is just F, so you can just put F right there. Now we need to fill these matrices in. So all we're going to do is pull out the coefficients. Do we have an x1 up here? No. 
We don't have that, so this is 0. x2, well, we have an x2. It's right here. Coefficient in front is a 1, so we put a 1. Now f, we're not multiplying anything by f in this equation for x1 dot, so this goes to 0. Now we repeat that same thing down here. Let's start over here on the second term, though. We've got negative k over m. That's our coefficient for x1, so that goes in here. This element here is going to be the coefficient for x2. So that's negative b over m. And then finally, f. Well, we have 1 over m, so that goes there. All right, so there we have it. And it's always a good idea to go back through and make sure you did everything right, got your signs right. So we have 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2. That gives me x2, which is what we have here, because that's 0. And then down here, we got negative k over m times x1 minus b over m x2. That's what we have here. And then plus 1 over m times f. So those are correct. Now we want to do our output. So our output, remember, is c times x. c is determined by what you want as your output. We want displacement. So think about what variable represents displacement. That's the question you need to ask yourself. So what variable is it? Hopefully you said x1. Because x1 is equal to y. All right, and y is our displacement variable. You can see it right here. All right, so here we'll have x1 represents y, which is displacement. So that means when I multiply c times x, I want to get x1, because x1 represents that displacement. That means that c is going to need to be 1 and then 0, because now when I multiply these, I get 1 times x plus 0 times x2. That gives me the x1, which is what I want, because that is displacement. All right, so this and this together would be our state space representation. All right, now if we wanted velocity of that mass, if we wanted to output that, instead of this c, we would have 0 and 1. And that would be because velocity is represented by x2. So we want to get x2 out, so multiply the 1 by x2 that gives you the velocity. All right. Okay guys, let's stop on that one and then we'll pick it up with another example in the next video.